Welcome back to Lemmings to the Tribes. Only two tribes left to go, so what color penultimate tribe be all about? Well, the Shadow Tribe isn't really what I'd call a penultimate tribe, but then again, because of the non-linear nature of the game, you could easily do this tribe like first or second. And well, let's just say that this late, this tribe is gonna come across as a reprieve, especially after the overly difficult space and cave limb tribes. But yeah, right out of the gate, you can definitely tell, oh boy, this tribe is definitely smooth looking. Of all of the tribes, this is probably my favorite looking one of the bunch, and gameplay wise, it's also pretty self explanatory. Nothing sneaky about these traps. You press on the big red button, and you just become a pancake. That's easy as it gets. Since there is no easy way to get over the buttons or anything, well, of course, the solution is to just get around them. Yep, by just creating an obstruction here, we can just go over the buttons altogether. And now we're going into the land of Oz. Or, well, it's the land of Ozzy. I'm not entirely sure what this is all about, but that's okay. We do not need to have anything be fancy or complicated here, but. Yeah, for some reason, the Shadow Tribe is mainly all about telephone uh, boots and all of those kind of really spooky landscapes that we have over here, and yeah, beware, because we definitely need to have the cement pourers going on in order to make any kind of progress happen. So here, because of the buttons are just poured at the complete bottom of a pit over here, it's just really easy to pour over them altogether. I don't even think you need two fillers altogether, I think one should be enough. As long as there's at least one tiny pixel that covers the buttons, everything is going to be fine. So yeah, this is pretty much your typical first level. Pretty easy, it kinda smooths you in onto the game mechanics and everything. Even if this was your first level in the game, you really will not have any kind of trouble making your way through this. Especially since there's only 3 skills and you have more than enough use of each of them, so... Yeah, all in all, a perfectly smooth and trivial introduction to the Shadow Tribe. And boy, I love that moon. I'm sorry, but I cannot get enough of it. But yeah, even though the first of all is really easy, the second one, however, definitely have a little bit more than meets the eye. It's... Neutral the Huge! Also, hi again, creepy moon. How are you doing? So yeah, this level is another one of those levels that forces the death of a limbing upon you, so yep, I'm sorry, but it's time to blow away like a big tub of mayonnaise. Uh, wait, I don't think that's how they blow up, but at this point I did not know what kind of comparison to make. But yeah, this level is all a matter of just using the right skill at the right time. Right here, we're just gonna have to twist our way down here, and of course, we have to use a basher here, because of course, if we use a fencer, we're just eventually going to reach the steel, and we'll lock ourselves into a dead end. And of course, a fencer is just good enough in order to pierce through this one final roof here. So yeah, it seems as if we've got all of this under control, and also I just love the fact that, well, you know, the ending point of this tribe is just the Doctor Who phone boot and everything. It's just time to travel backwards in time in order to get off this tribe, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I don't really see how else we could've done things, so... So I guess we absolutely did not do things right, so yep. That uh, exploder that you have, it's a decoy, you're not allowed to use it, so we're gonna have to use another way in order to dig through things, and Twister is exactly the way in order to do things. Yep, right here we've just managed to avert the use of one skill that allows us to dig downward. So, yep, now we've pretty much done the same exact thing as earlier, but because of the twister that went through two obstacles, now everything is fine and dandy, and we did not have to use the exploder this time around. At this point, we're just going to cut forward because, well, we don't really need to watch uh, the roof being destroyed all over again. Let's just say it's just a repeat of what we've done earlier, but minus the exploder. Ah, okay, so the first two levels just ended up giving us very ample time limits, but here we're back to only three minutes, and 
Surprise, surprise, it's one of those good old-fashioned symmetrical levels. Or, well, almost symmetrical because, yeah, the architecture on the east portion of the level is not quite the same, especially if you look at uh, where the fire hydrant is, but other than that, both sides of the level just end up playing the exact same. Roping is always kind of a delicate thing to do into this game, but other than that, the rest of this really should not be hard at all. And even if you didn't feel like using the ropers, I'm fairly certain that you could just flamethrower your way inwards in order to fall down into that little pit here, and then you use another flamethrower in order to go toward the exit, so... Yeah, even though you have a tiny arsenal of skills, there still is more than one way in order to do this level, so kudos on you level. Alright, I'm sorry, but you are absolutely not getting any prizes if you guess what this level team is going to be about. It's the Pancake Factory! Are you a bad enough limbing in order to avoid pushing on all these buttons? Also, come on, 9 minutes for a level that spans just the entire length of the screen and everything. This level doesn't even freaking scroll, it's just, come on, do we really need all of that leniency? So yeah, we had to use a jetpack and then glue pour from this side because of course, if you do the opposite, your glue is just going to go all the way on the length of the floor before it finally sticks on the floor and a bunch of lemmings are probably gonna walk into the buttons and just end up dying. And as you probably know by now, avoiding casualties is always the way to go into this game. So the final button might be a little bit dicey here because I still have this giant row of lemmings all over the place, so it might be a little bit more difficult, but alright, let's just hope that everything is okay. Okay, there we go. Thankfully there is not a whole lot of place where that glue can go, so it was still good enough in order to obstruct the way to the button, and there we go, another pretty easy level. So yeah, apart from maybe level 2, you can definitely see that difficulty-wise, this one is definitely way easier. I'd say most of the levels are on par difficulty-wise with the Beach Tribe, and only near the end of the tribe we're going to start having some more challenging levels, and then you have this one level over here which is just kind of annoying just because... It features the one thing in Lemmings that we all love to do, timing-based puzzles! It's time to jump to this chain, but oops, he didn't actually grab the chain because he was already uh, falling down from too high. So generally, the easiest way to go by is to make the chain swing before you even assign your Lemming to be a climber, and then you can finally do the daring swing all the way over here. That's literally the entire puzzle, apart from that it's pretty much the good old get a lemming out of the pack in order to go under the lemmings and then laser blast your way in order to free everybody. If anything, I don't even remember how this level fares on console versions of the game because most console versions of Lemmings completely do away with the whole swinging chain mechanic. Generally, they just redesign the levels in order to make it so that they just don't require them. Either they had more ground or they just have completely different portions of level in order to replace them, so... All in all, I can't really say this is a thing that I miss, because generally they're kinda ill-used, so... Eh. But yeah, as of this level, we've already hit the halfway mark of the Shadow Tribe, and... Again, level 2 was the only level somehow that was a challenge, just because of the little unorthodox way of using the Twister. But things are probably going to start picking up as of the second half of the Shadow Tribe. Coming soon to a YouTube channel near you.